Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Word of the Lord. James over here with you, and we're so glad you're with us. We have our content information. If you want to reach us, Word of the Lord at gmail.com, 276-340-2653. Have been on the, on the air here for a couple of weeks because of our tent meeting going on. Uh, we had TV going on all uh, every night during the tent meeting, and so I hope that you uh, benefited from that. And if you, didn't, if you didn't come out of the tent meeting, you missed a good uh, opportunity to study God's Word uh, with us. <clears throat> but if you would like a set of those DVDs, you can just reach me, call me, or email me and let me know you want a, a set of those DVDs. We've, we're getting them made. As a matter of fact, I, I made uh, uh, quite a few sets uh, this afternoon and getting them ready to get out to the individuals who ask for them. So if you'd like a copy of the 10 meetings, uh, you're welcome to have them. I'm sure we'll be running them on television uh, from time to time at a later date, but if you want a whole set of them, you can. Uh, they're, they are free for you, and so we hope that you will take advantage of that. Interesting calls <clears throat> on the last program, and I, find it, I always find it interesting why people call in on a Bible a program where discussing the Bible and all they have to say are curse words. You know, that shows, that shows right there, friends, that uh, the individuals, the individuals who are getting upset are really just like the individuals in the Bible. You know, when they can't answer, in Acts chapter uh, 6, the Bible says they could not answer Stephen. They could not, re- they could not answer, and so let me just put the verse up there. And uh, the result was, the result was they had to resort to uh, base things. Now notice this. In Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, <clears throat> verses, verse, uh, Acts chapter 6, verse 9, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and the Cyrenians and uh, Alexandrians, and them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people. Well, that's really what we're seeing. We're seeing individuals who are stirred up because they really can't give a defense for what they, for what they teach. And I don't know about you, friends, but when, uh, when Baptist doctrine or any doctrine really is being exposed uh, as, as contrary to the Bible, when, you're, when the, 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 the champion that calls in to defend or to criticize or to go against us when he is probably one of the rankest, most filthiest mouth persons there is in the in Rockingham County or where in the area where you're living, I, I would be a, I would be ashamed. I'd be calling in and separating myself from that kind of individual. But nonetheless, I guess it seems to me that that's that's the kind of uh, people you want on your side when you're fighting against the truth. When you're fighting against the truth, I guess anybody is on your side, and so that's that's really what we're having. But tonight, friends. We don't want you to fight against the truth. We want you to study God's Word with us. We want you to be in agreement with it. And that's what we're going to be doing tonight. We're going to be discussing uh, really an email that, that uh, uh, I received a few days ago and talking about some of, that thing, some of those things that are in that email. You know, it's amazing to me, and like I said, the, the callers uh, that called in earlier demonstrated very well how far men will go to get around uh, and keep from doing what God says do. I mean, I just, I just can't understand that. Why is it that people will work harder to get around doing what God says do? It's more work to try to get around it than if they just did it. You know, you all know people like that, and we probably have talked about individuals like that before in our lives, and we say, you know, this guy's so lazy, he works harder getting out of work. You know, it's more work, or it would be less work if he just do the job than trying to go and get her out of it. But that's what people do. They try to get around doing what God says rather than just obeying what God says. And usually the reason why they go around and try to find another way around doing what God says is because they don't really understand the Bible. They don't understand the principles that are in the Bible. They don't understand the concepts. They don't understand the plain teaching that's in the Bible because they've been blinding by their by their father's beliefs of the doctrines that of men that have been handed down from generation to generation. And so they, uh, they, they try hard to fight against it. And Jesus said to the apostle Paul, or Saul of Tarsus, he said, you know, it's hard to kick against the pricks. It's hard to kick against the things that are poking you. 
the things that are spurring you, the things that are, that are aggravating you, it's hard to kick against those things. And pretty soon you need to realize, I need to stop kicking in order to, in, in order to uh, uh, have the pain eased. You know, it's a whole lot nicer to go with God than to go against God. And that's what we're finding individuals doing. They're fighting against God, trying to go around what God says, and it'd just be a whole lot easier on them if they would just do what God says. If they would just simmer down and do what God says. And so tonight, I want to show you how this, how, how an example of this very thing. Now, this is an email <coughs> that was sent to me. And I really, uh, I haven't got a chance to respond to the individuals, but they said they'd be watching our lessons on YouTube. So my response is going to be, when I do respond to them, is uh, I've answered your email on, uh, on a lesson. You can watch it on this, on this uh, uh, video. But nonetheless, I do want to take the time to read this email to you to show you how individuals are thinking. Now, this, this may be a very sincere email. I don't know. I'm, I don't want to uh, read anything into it. I do have a tendency, I think, to think that when individuals are writing like this, they're trying to answer. I don't know how how honest they are when they write emails. So I'm trying to give them the individuals the benefit of the doubt that they're sincere and they're looking for a truth, honestly asking a, a question, not just trying to, uh, you know, be uh, uh, what uh, argumentative, as people say, or are defensive. So let's 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 just read it with you. <clears throat> Hello, I was watching one of your YouTube video, and I don't understand why you are preaching out of the four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and part of Acts are geared toward winning the Jewish nation. That is why in Matthew 9, 35, the writer talks about the message of Jesus. Uh, verse 35, Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and, and, every, and, very, and very disease among the people. Uh, then they go on to say Jesus did not preach or have anything to do with the Gen Greeks or Gentiles. Uh, Matthew 10, 5. Jesus sent, the tw sent 12 out, commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles or into the city of the Samaritans. Now, that's, they've got some pretty interesting uh, questions here, and we're going to be dealing with this. We're going to be dealing with this. Why do we preach out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and part of the book of Acts when, according to the writer, Jesus is not preaching to them, or that is not to the Gentiles? And then they said Jesus didn't send, or Jesus did not send 12 to the Gentiles, he sent them just to the Jews, and that's a true statement. But what we have to understand is why? Why would Jesus do that? And then they ask the question, what gospel do you preach? Do you preach Jesus' gospel of the kingdom, Matthew 9, 35, or the gospel that saves, which Paul preached? The gospel of, gra of the grace of God, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Well, I'm, I'm going to answer that question tonight as we go through our lesson. And I hope you see that what I, the gospel that I preach is actually going to be both. Because there are no two distinct doctor, uh, gospels that are being preached. Now, friends, I want you to notice this. The reason why individuals like this, and again, I'm not being hypercritical. I'm just trying to say individuals who have this problem or, or have this confusion. What they're doing is they're basing their, their beliefs on one verse and thinking, well, that's the inclusion of it. That's the, or that's the conclusion of it. But we need to figure out what is meant by the gospel of the kingdom. And so if we find that out, then maybe we can understand why Jesus would send his 12 just to the Jews and not to the Gentiles. Or why it would say he sent them to the, preach the gospel of the kingdom. So first of all, let's notice this. Jesus and John the baptizer, they both preached the gospel of the kingdom. They both preached it. Let's look at Matthew chapter 3 and verses 1 and 2. Matthew 3. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he uh, that was spoken of the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, 
Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Now notice, John was preaching about the kingdom. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Thus the gospel of the kingdom. Now you say, well James, it doesn't say that's the gospel of the kingdom. Well, it doesn't in that verse, but notice this. In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23, Jesus was preaching the, the same message. And notice, uh, Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And uh, what was he doing? Well, he went about teaching. He went about teaching. Repent, for the kingdom is at hand. Now, the gospel simply means good news. So, Jesus is talking about the good news. The kingdom is at hand. The kingdom's close by. The kingdom's coming. That's what John was preaching. So, the gospel of the kingdom was the good news about the kingdom. Now, the individual that wrote us and asked, asked this question, I wonder, do they understand anything about the kingdom? They, do they understand about the kingdom? The, the heading that they wrote said it's from a Christian. Well, if they were from a Christian, a New Testament Christian, they would understand that the kingdom is here. The kingdom is still here. The kingdom is established. And so you wouldn't be confused about the preaching of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. But notice this. If you don't understand the gospel of the kingdom, then you might buy into this idea that, well, Jesus was preaching one thing to the Jews, and then he sent his disciples out to preach something totally different to the Gentiles. And that's where a lot of people are. They think Peter went to the uh, uh, Jews and Paul went to the Gentiles. And so, therefore, there's two gospels. There's two distinctions here. But notice, let's back up and let's look at something about the kingdom. Let's back up and look at the gospel of the kingdom. Listen, John's job was to prepare the people. His job was to prepare the people. Luke 1, verse 16 and 17. Luke 1, verses 16 and 17. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Now, wait a minute. The children of Israel? You mean they weren't with God? How do you turn a child of God to God? How do you turn the children of Israel, someone who's already in a covenant relationship with God, how do you turn them to God? Now, our Baptist friends tell you that once saved, always saved. But here, these folks needed to repent. They were already in a covenant relationship with God. They were the descendants of Abraham by blood, according to the flesh. They were the children of Israel. They were the, 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 the chosen people, if you will. But notice... John's job was to turn them to God. Luke 1 verse 17, And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. What? You mean these people that are already in a covenant relationship with God? They weren't really ready for God? No, they weren't. These people that were God's people were not ready for the Lord. They were not ready for the kingdom. So John had to get them ready. He had to whip them in shape. And that meant telling them they needed to repent. Now Jesus did the same thing. In Mark 1, Mark 1 verse 14, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And saying, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent ye and believe the gospel. So when he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom, that means he's telling people, get ready, the kingdom's here, you need to repent. You need to get ready for it. You are already in a covenant relationship with God, you need to correct your life, repent of the sins that are in your life, so that when the kingdom is finally here, guess what? You're ready to go in. You're ready to go in. You are already a people that's been prepared. You just have lost your preparedness, you might say. So repent. Repent of your sins. Repent of, of um, going in and adding traditions of men to the law of Moses. That's what they had done. Matthew 15. They had transgressed the commandment of God with the commandments of uh, doctrines of men. You need to repent of all that. 
You need to repent of all that. What do you think the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the, and the Essenes and all these other group, religious groups, the Herodians, where do you think they came from? They're, they're the equivalent of denominations today. God's people had divided into different sects and different groups and started believing and teaching different things. I mean, the Sadducees believed that uh, did not believe in spirits, they did not believe in the resurrection, did not believe in angels. That's why they're sad, you see. And the Pharisees, they believed in the resurrection. Well, where did they come from? They both came as a result of abusing and twisting and moving away from God's law. So the message was you need to repent. You need to repent and get back to where you should have been all the time to be ready for the kingdom. So repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, if Jesus and John in this stage of, of the ministry of Christ, in this stage of the, of, of the gospel, if they're trying to get Israel to turn back and to be right with God, why would they go to the Gentiles? Why would he send anybody to the Gentiles? He's still working on Israel. See, he's working on the people that should be the closest to the kingdom. He's trying to get them to turn. So it makes sense that he wouldn't uh, send them out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature at this point. Why? Because the people that should be ready are not ready. Right? You might say the... Uh, let me use the illustration of uh, maybe a, a big party, a big get-together. You don't invite all the guests. You don't invite all the guests to the wedding or you don't invite all the guests to the party, right? When the host family's not even ready, right? You, you don't have everything ready. So what do you do? Well, first, let's get our own house in order. Let's make sure everything's ready before we start inviting everybody else in. So God had to prepare Israel. Make sure they were ready, and then he's going to send them to the Gentiles. But that's not to say that he would never send them to the Gentiles. He just wasn't ready at this point to send them into the Gent to the Gentiles. See, the Jews were being prepared, and so they need to repent first. That's why in Matthew 10, which is what our our emailer uh, writes, notice this. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into the city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Because this was a very specific group of people that needed to repent, because they had been, uh, they were part of a covenant with God. They were already in a covenant relationship with God. They just need to repent so that when the kingdom was here, boom, they're ready. They're all ready to go in. They're ready for the kingdom to be established and already have citizens in it. That's why he's telling them, get ready, get ready, get ready. Don't go to the Samaritans. Don't go to the Gentiles. But when he says don't go to the Gentiles, friends, he's not saying, I'm never going to send you there. He's saying, don't go now. You see how sometimes when we read a verse, we read a verse and we go, well, that's a very definitive verse. And that, that's, that's what that verse says, and therefore there can, cannot anything be added to it. Jesus just said, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He didn't say, never go there. Because later he's going to send these same twelve, he's going to send them into the uttermost part of the world. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, notice this. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. But the same 12, with the exception of Judas, all right, the same 11, let's say 11 of those 12, in Acts 1 and verse 8, notice what he's going to tell them. He says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now why would he tell them to go to Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth, the Gentiles, when he told them in chapter 10, don't go to Samaritans and don't go to the Gentiles. Because in Matthew chapter 10, he wasn't ready for them to go to the Samaritans. And he wasn't ready for them to go to the Gentiles. 
But in Acts chapter 1, he's ready for them. Actually, in Acts chapter 1, he's not ready for them still. They don't go to the Gentiles until 10 or 15 years later in Acts 10 when, Philip, when Peter finally gets to Cornelius' house. See that? So, my point is, God knows that there's a progression here. There's a way to bring, bring things about so that everything doesn't blow up. Listen, stop and think about this for a minute, friends. The Jews weren't ready for the kingdom themselves. Now, you talk about going and bringing Gentiles in at the same time as the Jews, all on the same day, boy, it'd blow up. It would blow up knowing how the Jews, or how the Gentile, Jews felt about the Gentiles especially. But knowing how they felt about each other, and you're going to automatically bring them in, and there's not going to be any kind of buffer zone here, boy, it, you'd blow the church up. The kingdom would be destroyed before it ever got going. God knew what he was doing. You talk about all the, the, the racial tension and strife that's going on in our world today. And then you say, well, we're going to put all these people together that are at odds with each other. And we're just going to put them all in a room together and say, hey, God loves you. Let's get along. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. See, God was working on the Jews first. Now, the Jews, they should have been ready for the kingdom. They should have been ready for the kingdom because they had been looking for it all this time, all down through their history. They're looking for the kingdom. They'd been hearing prophecies about the kingdom. They knew the kingdom was coming. They knew it was going to be established. They knew where it was going to be established. They knew a king was coming. They were looking for him, the Messiah. And so they were looking for this kingdom. Notice this in Genesis 49 and verse 10. Genesis 49 in verse 10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. Now, this is all the way back in Genesis. This is Joseph, still alive. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Now, this is a, this is a statement about Christ. A lawgiver from Judah until Shiloh come? That's the Christ. That's the Messiah. They've been looking for, the, for this event all down through Jewish history. Look what Isaiah says in Isaiah 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called a wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and of the increase of the government and peace there shall be no end, and upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So here's, we're talking about the kingdom. Sitting on the throne of David. The Jews are looking for this. They're looking for the kingdom. They're looking for it to be established. As a matter of fact, um, even in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1 and verse 6, When they therefore will come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time Restore again the kingdom to Israel. They're still thinking about the kingdom. Now, it's good they're thinking about the kingdom because after all, they've been preaching the kingdom. They've been saying the kingdom's at hand, the kingdom's at hand, the kingdom's at hand. So they're looking for the kingdom, but you know what they don't understand? They don't understand the nature of it. They're still looking for a physical kingdom. And that's why, that's why they have this misunderstanding. And you know what? That's why people today have the same problem. They don't understand the nature of the kingdom. 
They don't understand the nature of the kingdom. That's why they would say, well, the Jews were, were talked to about the kingdom, but the Gentiles weren't. Wrong, friends. The Gentiles were told about the kingdom. The Jews were just told about the kingdom first. When you don't understand the nature of the kingdom, then any message you hear about the kingdom, it's going to be skewed. It's going to be twisted. So here the Jews are being told, the kingdom's a hand, the kingdom's a hand, the kingdom's a hand. Get ready, get ready, get ready. And so they think they're ready, but still, even the apostles don't truly understand the, the nature of the kingdom. It is a spiritual kingdom. Notice, friends, in John chapter 18, John 18, verse 36, Jesus answered, he's talking to Pilate, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world... Then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Or what was his kingdom? From whence was his kingdom? It was from heaven. It was a spiritual kingdom. It's not a, it's not a fleshly kingdom, an earthly kingdom. It's not one that's going to have a, a throne set up somewhere over here in, a, in Jerusalem or in Palestine. And Christ is going to reign. No, that's not the kind of kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. And so the, the gospel about the kingdom was preached to the Jews in order to get them to be ready for this spiritual kingdom. They had a wrong mindset. Man, they had a lot of work in themselves. You talk about bringing a whole other group of people, the Gentiles in, on top of that, you're bringing, you're bringing people that don't even understand the kingdom into the kingdom. They don't fully understand the nature of it. And then you're going to bring somebody that they hate into it and you're going to expect that to work? No, 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 no. That's not going to work, friends. It's not going to work. That's why Jesus went about preaching the gospel of the kingdom to the Jews first. Not because it was exclusively for the Jews, but because God wasn't ready for the Gentiles to come in at the same time. But see, now, but now notice this. Once the kingdom was established, once the kingdom was established, all nations were going to eventually come into the kingdom. All nations were going to come into the kingdom. And that's why I'm saying, friends, when I'm asked, do I preach the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of salvation that Paul preached? I preach both. You know why? Because they're one and the same. Jew and Gentile were to come into this kingdom. Notice what Jesus said in Matthew 20, uh, 24. Matthew 24 and verse 14. He said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations. Why don't we go to all the world? Why don't we go to all nations? Why all the world and why all nations? If it was just to the Gentiles. I mean just to the Jews, excuse me. Why all the world and all the nations if it was just to the Jews? We just read Acts 1 verse 8. Jesus said you'll be witnesses to me. Both in Judea and Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. Why? Why? If it was just a gospel, if it was just the if the gospel of the kingdom was just for the Jews, why? Because the gospel of the kingdom was not just for the Jews. The gospel of the kingdom is the gospel. Period. The gospel is good news about the kingdom. The gospel is good news about Jesus. The gospel is good news about a lot of things. It's all wrapped up in one neat package of the gospel and it is for Jew and Gentile. So don't misunderstand when you say, well, Jesus just sent them to the Jews so therefore the gospel of the kingdom was only to the, the Jews. No. No. Not ultimately it wasn't. Maybe that one, one point in time it was. But ultimately it was going to be God's plan. It was always God's plan that all nations come into the kingdom 
And they were going to do so by the gospel. Look at this. In Galatians 3 and verse 8. Galatians 3 verse 8. We're talking about Abraham. The father of the faithful. Galatians 3 7 says. The father of the faithful. Look what it says. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen. Not the Jews. The Gentiles. The heathen. Through faith preached before the gospel. Which gospel? It doesn't matter. There's only one gospel. It wasn't a Jewish gospel, a Gentile gospel. It was just one gospel. He preached the gospel unto Abraham. How? What was the good news that he preached to Abraham? Saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. The good news about justifying Gentiles and justifying Jews. The good news was the gospel. And it was the good news about Christ who would come and establish his kingdom and be the savior of all men, Jew and Gentile alike. The gospel that was preached to Abraham was in the form of, in thee shall all nations be blessed. And that was talking about Christ. I was talking about Christ. The gospel about Christ, the gospel about Christ is more than just Christ is born, joy to the world. It's more than just good news that Christ was born. It's the good news about Christ and also the good news that Christ provided. Let me say that again. It's not just the good news that Christ is born. It's not just news about Christ. But it's the good news, it's the gospel that Christ said preach. In other words, it's the gospel that came from Christ. It's the gospel about Christ that tells of Christ. It is the gospel that Christ had preached. Let me... Try to clear that up a little bit. I can tell I'm, I'm losing some of you. I can look out there and I can see you got a little puzzled face, look on your face. The gospel is not just about Jesus. It's also the words that he had preached. Notice this. Jesus said, or excuse me, Paul said in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 2, in verse 12. Paul says, Furthermore, when I come to Troas to preach Christ's gospel. Now that's not the gospel about Jesus living, dying, his death, burial, and resurrection. That's the gospel that Christ said preach. See the difference? All right, we got a phone. You got a word from the Lord. You're on the word from the Lord. You on the air? Hello. Hello. This is James. This is James. Hey, James. Turn. Talk to you. I love your message tonight. I think. I mean, that message could go out to Islam or India, anywhere. I really like it. I just had a question for you. You know, you were talking about the uh, Jews wouldn't accept the message of Christ, or they didn't understand it. And I went back and looked at my Bible where I had it highlighted, and. Uh, in John twelve thirty seven down through uh, 48, I guess it is, you know, it's talking about that uh, the Father had blinded them, you know, so that his prophecy would be fulfilled. I'm not trying to mess up your message, but, you know, what I'm saying is that had to happen so the prophecy would happen so that all nations could uh, have the salvation. Right. Well, and, and that's what... You know, Isaiah said this, and then Paul said it again in, in, in uh, Romans 10, that it was going to be when the Gentiles came in, that was going to provoke the Jews to jealousy. You know, the Jews got rid of it. The Jews rejected the gospel. And then when the Gentiles came in, the Jews go, oh, wait a minute. You know, we're God's chosen people, and they, they come back in. Just like, just like kids, you know. One kid rejects something, so give to the other kid, and the, kid, and then the first kid wants it. So... But provoke them to jealousy. It's a, but it's, it's all, all the same gospel. Kid, uh, 
I mean, in support of what you said earlier about the time wasn't right yet, you know, uh, that's why they didn't go out into the world. Uh, I was looking and I saw uh, in Luke 24:49, and he says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but carry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be undued with the power from on high. So they weren't ready, and you're exactly right. I love well, this man. God bless you. All right, all right. Thanks for the call. All right. Yeah, and, and, and Luke twenty four forty nine, when he said, uh, Terry in Jerusalem, T being due with the power on high. Uh, of course, that took place on the day of Pentecost. Acts 2 is when they received the gift of the Holy Spirit and, and were speaking in tongues and could get the message to all the Jews. But when I said the Jews weren't ready for it, I'm talking about they, they had this uh, physical kingdom mindset in, in, uh, in place that they had to get rid of. And uh, that's what had to be replaced. So... They certainly weren't ready to receive a, uh, the message of a spiritual kingdom. They were looking for a, a physical kingdom. John 6, verse 15. Uh, just throw this out here while we're here. John 6, and verse uh, 15. Uh, Jesus perceived in their heart, perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king. He departed again to a mountain himself alone. So these people were already, they were wanting to make Jesus a king, a physical king. Nope. His kingdom is not of this world. It's not, not a physical kingdom. So they had to, had to correct their mindset. And that's why God, uh, Christ only sent them preaching the gospel of the kingdom to the Jews only in, in, the, in the very early stages. But, but the gospel ultimately is going to encompass and, and reach everybody. Because God intended to justify all people through the same, the same way and bring them all into the same place that is into Christ. And thus he preached the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In, the, in, thee shall all, in thy seed shall all nations be blessed. He's talking about Christ. So that's what we're saying, friends. The, the gospel, is ju there's just one gospel. One gospel for the Jew, one gospel for the Gentile. That's all that God ever intended. One gospel for the Jew, one gospel for the Gentile. Notice this, in Mark 16... 15 and 16. Mark 16, 15 and 16. Again, we've already made this point, but notice this. He that believe, uh, verse uh, 15, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. There it is, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Which gospel are we talking about? There's only one. It's the gospel of the kingdom. It's the gospel of Christ. There's only one gospel. And, God, and Christ said, go and preach this gospel to every creature and to all the world. Jew and Gentile alike, it doesn't matter. They're all going to be accountable to this one gospel. Romans uh, 1 verse 16. Paul says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The same gospel was going to go to the Jew and the Gentile. Now this is what I'm saying, friends. If you're reading through the, through the gospel accounts and you say, well, Jesus had never intended for this to go to the Gentiles, you haven't read far enough. The gospel was always for both Jew and Gentile. You're on the word of the Lord. Hello, James. How are you? I'm wonderful. Good. And, and you, I enjoyed the message tonight so much, but what I've never really known, what was a Gentile and what did they become after they received the gospel? All right. Are they still, are they still called Gentiles today? And, and well, yeah, what was okay. a Gentile? Okay. I'll let uh, you answer on the air. Okay. All right. All right. What is a Gentile? And what do they become when they obey the gospel? That's a good question. A Gentile was anybody who wasn't a Jew. So anybody that wasn't a Jew was a Gentile. Now, when they obeyed the gospel, they became a Christian. Doesn't matter if they were Jew or Gentile, they became a Christian. Now, sometimes we make a distinction between Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians just because of the, uh, their background, you might say. 
the, the Jewish Christians were the Christians that left Judaism, right, and uh, obeyed the gospel. Uh, but ultimately, they were just Christians. I mean, they were all the same, uh, Jew and Gentile alike. They were all Christians. So uh, you're still a Gentile. If you, uh, uh, when you obey the gospel, you're still a Gentile. You're just a Christian now. Just like uh, if you obey the gospel, if you're in North Carolina and you obey the gospel, you're still a North Carolinian. It doesn't change anything about that, you, uh, you know. And, uh, but once you obey the gospel, you become a Christian. And so that's, that's the answer there. Jews and Gentiles, a Gentile is anybody that's not a Jew, but once you obey the gospel, you're, you're just a Christian. And the gospel was for both of those individuals. Now, when someone says, well, there's more than one gospel, friends, that's just not, not the case. It's not the case. I want you to notice this. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 4, Acts 8 and verse 4, First of all, there were persecution uh, on the church. Persecuted against the church, and, uh, which was at Jerusalem. And they were scattered abroad throughout all the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. Well, that's what Jesus said was going to happen. They were going to start in Jerusalem and they were going to spread to Judea and in Samaria. Now, notice this. Uh, Stephen is, is uh, killed. They, they lamented him. They buried him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every home, hailing men and women, committing them to prison. Verse 4. <clears throat> Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Well, what were they preaching? What were they preaching? Well, the Bible says they were preaching, they were preaching uh, Christ. They went everywhere preaching Christ. Well, that's the gospel. Preaching Christ. Now notice this. When, when, Steve, when Philip goes to Samaria and he's preaching Christ, that's the gospel. Everybody, we're, we're in agreement, right? He's preaching the gospel, the word, the gospel. But notice this. When, he gets to, when we get to verse 12, when they believed Philip preaching, that's the gospel, right? Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. <gasps> You mean Philip was preaching the gospel of the kingdom? That's exactly right. Because preaching Christ, the good news of Christ, the good news of the gospel, it's all under the same big umbrella. It's all the same. Preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Now, what were they doing? They were preaching the gospel, friends. How do I know that? How do you know they were preaching the gospel, James? Well, let's keep on reading. Let's keep on reading. The apostles come down, lay hands on the Samaritans so that they can receive the miraculous gifts that could only be given by the laying on the apostles' hands. So Peter and John come down. Now notice what happens. They rebuke Simon the sorcerer because he wants, he wants to buy the gift of the Holy Spirit. But notice this. In verse 25, and they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Why were they preaching the gospel to the Samaritans? Why were they preaching the gospel of the kingdom to the Samaritans? Why were they preaching the gospel of Christ to the Samaritans? Because the same gospel that can save a Samaritan is the same gospel that saved a Jew. The same gospel that can save a Jew or a Gentile is the same gospel that will save a Jew or Gentile today. Same gospel. There was only one gospel. You see, my friend, you see what we're talking about? So when someone says, well, what gospel do you preach? There's only one that I do preach. There's only one that I can preach and still be right with God. All right? They preach the gospel to the Samaritans. Now, I'm trying to show you, friends, that I'm trying to show you that um, trying to show you that there's only one gospel. There's no distinction between the gospel of Christ that Christ preached and the gospel that Paul preached. It's all the same. It's talking about salvation for Jew and Gentile. Let's look at Acts 14, verse 1 through 7. Acts 14, we're going to begin in verse 1. And it came to pass uh, in Iconium, 
that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. Now, wait a minute. They're going into the synagogue of the Jews and they're preaching? And the result of their preaching is that Greeks believe as well? Now, if you're preaching to Jews and you're preaching a certain gospel, why, why do G Greeks believe? Huh? How, how could a Greek believe what you're preaching to the Jews if there's two different gospels? But when the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds affected and, 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 made, and made their minds evil affected against the brethren, long time therefore abode they, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Look at verse 4. And the multitude of the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part held with the apostles. And when they were, uh, and there, when there was assault made, both the Gentiles and also the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them. Verse 6, they were aware of it and fled into Lystra and Derby, cities of Laconia, uh, Laconia and unto the region that uh, lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. Not a gospel. Not the Jewish gospel. Not the Gentile gospel. Just the gospel. Why? Because the gospel was for Jews and Gentiles. Why would Jews be upset about Paul and the others coming in and preaching and teaching to Gentiles? Why would it, why would it bother them? If they're preaching a Gentile gospel, why would it, why would it bother them at all? But if the gospel that saves the Jews is also being preached to the Gentiles, hey, the Gentiles are dogs. The Gentiles aren't, aren't worth the time of day to us. You mean you're going to bring them into the same kingdom with us? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's why Paul said in Acts, uh, Acts 13, verse 46, Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken unto you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves worthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles with the same message. Why? Because the gospel is for both the Jew and Gentile. And that's why the Jews were getting upset. That's why they were getting mad. Because they did not want the Gentiles getting anything that they felt belonged to them. But you know what? The gospel was for all. And the gospel, the gospel was going to bring Jew and Gentile together in one place. It was going to bring Jew and Gentile together in one place. Look at this. In Ephesians chapter 2. That at the same time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now, uh, my email writer quoted this verse. They're saying, well, see, there's a distinction between the Jew and the Gentile. Well, that's exactly right. No doubt about it. There's a distinction between Jew and Gentile. But notice this. When they both obey the gospel, look what happens. Now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were far, were far off, that's the Gentiles, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Now you're just like the Jews. Now you're close to God. For he is our peace who hath made of both one, that's made of Jew and Gentile one, and broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments containing ordinances to making himself of to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body in the cross, having slain the image thereby. Now, friends, this is what the gospel will do for you. The gospel brings Jew and Gentiles together in one place. 
And that's in the church. That's in Christ. That's in Christ. The church. The church is the body of Christ. And friends, that's why when we're talking about you want to be in the church of Christ, look, the church is his body. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. The church is his body. God has given head to be, be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Now, you want to say, well, the church I'm in is in the Bible. Well, find it. I just couldn't believe those people that called in could not find Well, you're wrong. You're, you're, preaching, you're preaching a lie, but I can't show you where, where you're wrong. Well, you're a false accuser. Friend, you want to call in and say the Baptist church is, is right and the, and the church we preach about is wrong and you can't find it in the Bible? You, you're dishonest with yourself. The gospel, when you preach the gospel, friends, you don't come up with the Baptist church. But you do come up with the church of Christ. The church that belongs to Christ. You don't come up with the Brethren Church. You don't come up with the Apostolic Church. You don't come up with the Lutheran Church or the Catholic Church. You come up with the Lord's Church, the church of Christ. That's what's, what happens when you preach the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel that saves. That's what you come up with. Now, how do I know that you have to be in the church to be saved? Because notice this. In Acts 2, in verse 47, the Lord added to the church daily said you should be saved. Now, if these people, if they were added to the church, if God added them to the church, it seems to me like it's an important place. Now, if you can prove to me that that church, the church that God added these people to, was the Baptist church, you know, there's more than $1,000 that will be given to you. We'll just start with 1000 I'll give you 1000 and hug your neck for showing me another church in the Bible. It's not there, friends. God added to put the saved in the church, but he didn't put them in a the man-made church. Now, why is it that people want to say, well, just preach Christ? If I preach Christ, friends, I'm going to preach about the church. I'm going to preach about the kingdom. Because all that comes when you preach the gospel. The gospel. The gospel is the power of God to save, Romans 1.16. Now, if God put the saved in the church, there's a connection between the church and the gospel, is it not? The gospel is the power of God to save. You obey the gospel, and guess what? You're saved. Where does God put you? He puts you in the church. Now, if you want to tell me, well, I obeyed the gospel, and I wound up in the Baptist church. No, you didn't. Because, number one, the Baptist church is not in the gospel. So, if you obeyed the gospel, you never will wind up in the Baptist church, number one. And, number two, you won't wind up in the Baptist church because God won't put you there. Even if you did obey this gospel, even if you did obey the gospel, you'll never wind up in a Baptist church because why? Because God doesn't put people there. Now, I was talking to some folks the other day and they said, well, I, just, I believe I'm in the right church. Well, you know what, friends? Even if you obeyed the gospel, even if you obeyed this right, you never would wind up in a man-made church because God won't put you there. So how did you wind up there? How did you wind up there? How did you wind up in a church that's not in the Bible? One of two ways. Either you obeyed the gospel and uh, you just immediately chose to disobey God and go to a man-made church. Highly unlikely. Because men-made churches, you wind up in a man-made church if you're taught the truth. But more than likely is you weren't taught the gospel. You weren't taught the gospel. Someone tells you the church of your choice or any church will do. That's not the gospel, friends. That's not the gospel that Christ preached. That's not the gospel of Christ. See, in the Bible, the gospel, the gospel is what brings is what brings peace. Paul said he's reconciled both. He made peace with us through the gospel. 
it's the it's the gospel it's the gospel of peace. Ephesians six and verse fifteen, I believe it is. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Peace between God and man. See, the gospel is what reconciles us to God. Now, friend, you can't say you obeyed the gospel and wind up someplace that God didn't say. And you can't say, well, I obeyed one gospel because I'm a Gentile. Listen, the gospel that Paul preached, Paul preached the same gospel Peter preached. And that's why I preach out of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and parts of Acts. It's because it's all talking about the same gospel. The gospel that is preached today is the same gospel that was preached on the first day of Pentecost, when the church was established, the day of Pentecost. Peter said, repent and be baptized to every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That's why I preach that. You know why? Because that's the gospel. That's the gospel. That's the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ right there. You're buried with Christ in baptism. You die with Christ. You're buried with Christ. And you're raised with Christ. But know ye not that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. There's the death of Christ. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism. There's the burial of Christ. That like as Christ was raised from the from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. There's a resurrection with Christ. The death, burial, and resurrection. That's the gospel. That's the gospel that saves. Now friends, have you obeyed the gospel? Have you obeyed the gospel tonight? Listen, if, you, if you're in a man-made church, you haven't obeyed the gospel. You haven't obeyed the gospel. There's not a Baptist preacher around there's not a denominational preacher around that will tell you, that will teach you the gospel and then get you wound up in the man-made church. Can't be done. You cannot be taught right and wind up wrong. Friends, the gospel that we preach is the gospel that's going to save your souls. That's why if we don't preach the gospel, Paul says, Woe unto me. Woe unto me. Listen, I want you to know, friends, we love you We love you enough to tell you the truth. Woe if I preach not the gospel. And the reason why I don't preach about the uh, denominational church, a Baptist, Methodist, whatever church, because it's not in the gospel. It's not in the gospel. But friends, we want to help you obey the gospel. And if we can assist you in doing that very thing, here's how you can reach me. 276-340-2653, word from the Lord at gmail.com. Give me a call. I'll be glad to study with you. Glad to help you out in any way we can. We're out of time. Thanks for watching, friends. Always remember, if you want the gospel, make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night.